Henshin a go-go, baby. What's good, guys? Yoku here. And tonight, we finally get our hands on Fu Shwin. She's got an incredible amount of potential stacked into her kit, and it caused quite a lot of discussion amongst the community. Can she solo sustain? Does damage reduction even matter? Is she free to play or pay to win, requiring her signature light cone? All of which I'll answer truthfully in my complete guide to building your Fu Shwin, regardless if you're free to play or not. Unlike usual, I'll state it now since it's a long video. If you enjoy these type of videos from me and would like to help out and me being able to create more of them more often. Please feel free to subscribe to EOverse or become a member to financially help my pockets because then I can make more pools. <laughs> With that out of the way, let's get into Fu Shuen. The omniscience sees through you. The cycles of yin and yang never cease. As we start to break down Fu Shuen's kit, we need to acknowledge her primary function. Mitigate the team's damage to herself without dying. If she's dead, the function is no good. For this reason, your main focus will be to build her primarily defensive with a sub choice of honestly whatever the hell you want. Crit damage, crit rate, break effect, you got it. This is to ensure her purpose of keeping the team alive is always in check, while also adding to her utility of proactively helping the DPSs on the team. The most basic way to understand this role is that she wants so much HP that in the event she does take 80% of her entire party's HP she'll still be alive and then just heal it off with her amazing talent. Fushwin's function on the team is so important that you should be focused on building as much HP, defense, and damage reduction as possible in order to keep her alive. During my own testing, there were a lot of times where I found myself dealing with too much AoE in scenarios that were just unfortunate, but common enough to bring up concern. So it's important to understand when you should be using skill, basic attack, basic attack, or double skill to try getting an emergency party heal. Her damage mitigation is amazing and further increases her resistance to damage with effects like the Wuthering Snow's two-piece bonus, or even giving her Wandering Cloud for the healing bonus. With that in mind, your goal should be to keep her matrix up as long as possible while building her ultimate as efficiently as possible. This doesn't mean she needs to be sonic fast, but you do need to pay more attention to this little purple bubble beneath her icon that signals whether or not she's going to heal herself when she drops beneath 50% HP. You don't have an ult, you probably don't have heals. The Omnisia sees through you. The cycles of yin and yang never cease. Fu Xuan's kit is thankfully incredibly easy to understand. Starting off with Nova Burst, her basic attack. Nothing too crazy about this, but I would like to note two things. One, it's based on HP scaling. The more HP Fu Xuan has, the more damage this does. And yes, it can absolutely crit. Two, she's still a quantum character, which means if you do break someone with this, it results in a lovely entanglement. That's free damage that we'll get into in a lot more detail later on in the video. You'll be using this move a lot, but it's currently the lowest talent priority. Don't stress it. Following Nova Burst is her skill, known by stars, shown by hearts. She'll immediately activate the Matrix of Prescience, which then takes the damage that would happen to the team and mitigates 65% of that damage to herself. In the simplest way to explain this, if an enemy does 100 damage to your Zila normally, then you put Fu Xuan on the team. Well, now Zila only takes 35 damage while Fu Xuan takes 65. Now, of course, there's still gonna be some factors of damage reduction traits built into the skill and the talent that will reduce that 65 even further. So this is, again, just a basic example of how you should understand what mitigation does. It doesn't just stop there though. Allies under the matrix of press now gain the knowledge effect. I know that sounds like some school of wizardry nonsense, but stay with me. This knowledge effect is OD. Not only does it increase everyone's max HP by a percentage of Fu Xuan's own max HP, but it also increases their crit rate by a decent amount. Investing into this skill can easily make some of your DPS characters like Jing Yuan drop that crit rate body piece for a crit damage body piece instead. You can also think of the extra HP allies get from Fu Xuan as the preemptive damage that they'll have mitigated within the matrix. This skill alone carries Fu Xuan into such a strong position in the current meta that it's almost impossible to not look at this. So much, in fact, that it is now priority number one regarding your talent investments. Now, if you're like me, then damage mitigation just isn't enough. Eventually, something's gonna wipe you 
out if it keeps hitting you enough. And thankfully, that's where a talent comes into play. Bleak Bleeds Bliss. I'm just going to call this BBB, Triple B, BBL for short. This talent is practically the second half to her entire kit. While she's on the field, Matrix active or not, everyone on the team has misfortune avoidance and that gives them a huge damage reduction across the board. If you can max this out, that's almost a 20% team-wide damage reduction. So now you have the damage being reduced before it even gets mitigated by Fu Xuan. We love that for her. Let's not forget she automatically heals herself by an upwards of 90% of the missing HP when she drops below half. I don't know what Hoyoverse was cooking in the lab with Fu Xuan, but they did not need to go this hard on her. Fu Xuan's kit is literally set setting her up to never die. Easily number two on the priority list. Lastly, we have her ultimate final flat. I, I mean the, the woes of many morph to one. It deals quantum damage up to 100% of her max HP to all enemies and gives her a single stock of the HP restoring trigger from her talent I mentioned earlier. Not only that, but her Ascension 4 Trace allows her ultimate to work as some sort of emergency heal to the party. When it's used, it heals all other allies in the party by 5% of Fu Xuan's max HP. It doesn't seem like a lot, but this could be a make or break between saving your team, depending on how much HP Fu Xuan actually has or getting one shot. Since most of her damage utility comes from this ultimate, let me explain some key notes I had here. Critical hits and break effect. The multiplier itself is low, so don't expect a crazy amount of damage coming out of this, but average damage doesn't mean zero damage. She's not the DPS on the team, and it should not be expected of her to perform as such. However, it's always nice having help breaking down the enemies for your DPSs to clear the wave. The second piece I wanted to note was the aspect of break effect. Fu Xuan is the second character in the game that has the potential to entangle every single enemy on the field at once. That means if you manage to build a max HP sub break Fu Xuan, her utility for the team skyrockets. Unfortunately, you have to sacrifice a lot. In regards to her trace priority, there honestly isn't one. You need every single one of these. She doesn't function the way she wants to without having every single node on the board active. Of course, you can skip some things like the HP percent or crit rate if you're not looking for that. You guys know specifically which nodes I'm referring to. So make sure you prioritize turning these on as quickly as possible. The Omnisia sees through you. The cycles of yin and yang never cease. And here's where the sacrificing starts. I've explained her kit to you, and uh, for the most part, everything should be understood as simple as I can make it. When it comes to her relic sets, uh, Fu Xuan doesn't have one that's designed specifically for her. A lot of what you'll build will consist of two-piece this or two-piece that. In regards to her best options, I personally feel like it comes down to whatever you have the best stats of. The specific pieces or relic sets in mind include Wandering Cloud, Longevous, Messengers, Wuthering Snow, The Thief Set, Quantum, and even the Night Set could all work for her. Each of them serve a unique purpose that builds a different kind of Fu Xuan, i.e. if you want to focus more on AoE entanglement, then Thief Set could be your best option. Are you worried about emergency heals because you're taking too much damage? Then a combination of Wandering Cloud and Longevous or even Weathering Snow could be what's best for you. It honestly all comes down to managing the ideal stats to be in your best favor. I'm a huge fan of a single two-piece Wandering Cloud on every everything because of the outgoing healing boost. Sometimes I just suck at the game. So it's the little things in these relic sets that make it almost perfect for her. In fact, it's literally 1% under perfect when using the two piece healing set. Fu Xuan's ability to heal upwards of 80% loss HP is wonderful. And adding the extra 10% healing practically gives her a full HP recovery. Going over 11% puts you in the ballpark of overhealing. And unfortunately, Fu Xuan doesn't really get any benefits from doing this like Bailu would. Because of that, I don't recommend slapping an outgoing healing chest on her as it started to give diminishing returns. On top of that, the extra 10% applies to Fushuin's bonus trace that heals teammates after using her ult. All of these relic options are fairly close in helping her achieve the function she wants to do on the team. So now we're here talking about light cones. And in my previous video, I mentioned that Fushuin's light cone options were grim pun intended, due to the fact that she was HP focused and not defense based like the other preservation units. A lot of you gave me your opinions on two light cones in particular, the moment of victory, which is Japar's signature and Landau's choice, which is baby Japar 
signature. Now I want to put a large focus on what I detailed earlier in the video. Her primary function is to keep herself and the team alive. She is not Japard, and my thought process here is that she doesn't want to take every hit possible because there is no shield. If Fu Xuan goes down, no more Matrix of Prescience for the party. She doesn't get a revive like him unless you have E2. With the knowledge of how HP, defense, and damage reduction stats affected Fu Xuan in application, my light clone choices for her are geared towards keeping her primary function active for as long as possible, obviously with the most efficiency in mind. Some of you like to live on the edge and some of you are just coping. Regardless of which side you're on, here are my results of the in-game testing that I did in comparison to my simulations. Looking at the graph that I have on the screen, I am using this simply for visual representation. At the very top is going to be her signature light cone. She already closed her eyes. This is of course her best in slot simply because they designed it this way. Her main stat being HP is increased by almost a quarter of her max HP, along with an unconditional energy regeneration rate by 12%. After her HP is reduced, she reduces the damage dealt to all allies by 9%, and at the start of every wave, she restores all allies HP by 80% of whatever they just lost. Everything about this light cone is suited towards benefiting Fu Xuan's primary function, and that's exactly what you want. The free HP and ERR allow you to open your builds a lot more than you could without it. The removal to need an ERR rope for consistent ultimates exist. The extra HP from the light cone opens a window to use a crit damage body piece, quantum orb, or even a break effect rope. Whatever crazy wonky stuff you wanna do, having her signature light cone lets you keep what's optimal and still have room to play with extra portions in your build. It's not about being so broken that it's mandatory, it's about convenience to do whatever you want. Trickling down from there, you guys can see that I have moment of victory as well as texture of memories coming up almost neck and neck. These two light cones in particular serve very distinct purposes, but I personally like texture of memories a little bit more due to the self survival that it allows Fu Xuan to have. Moment of Victory is outstanding for her and as well as providing more benefit to the team, being able to pull that aggro away and give yourself a little bit more energy each time you get hit. Just for some quick mass, let's go over Japard's shield and we'll use level 10 for the max numbers. This is going to give his allies 45% of whatever his defense is. So on average, I'll use 3,500. 45% of that 3,500 is roughly gonna be about 1,500 shield that he can give to the entire team. What textures of memory does is give Fu Xuan the shield instead and it's based off of her HP not her defense. 32% because you're able to S5 this for free on top of a low average HP amount of about 7,000 is going to give you 2,200 shield. You also have to include the 24% damage reduction when the shield is active. Landau's choice falls right beneath these options with day one in my new life being right beneath that. These light cones serve as a purpose for you to be able to utilize and perform Fu Xuan's function. When she's already mitigating a large portion of damage for the entire team, giving her more direct damage without a shield by increasing her taunt value ends up killing your Fu Xuan faster than you can heal it back if you already don't have the build stats for that. If you don't have the purple orbs, you don't get healed. If you're not fast enough to constantly get your ult back, you don't get healed. If you become too fast, then your party doesn't have shields up for as long as they might need. If you can't meet certain conditions in the first place to keep the team alive, then your Fu Xuan just isn't doing her job. Moment of victory, Landau's choice, whatever you need is fantastic if you already have an HP stat above 6,500 and don't need any of the extra stuff. Plus, you also need to have an extra moment of victory just lying around. That or an S5 Landau's choice when texture of memories is free and you can S5 it for free. The Omnisia sees through you. The cycles of yin and yang never cease. Finally, we're at the portion of the guide where the big question can be asked. Is it possible for Fu Xuan to solo sustain a full team by herself and how would she do this? She doesn't function like Locha or Bailu who provide so much healing that your team isn't afraid to die or Japard who constantly gives your team undying shields. What's funny is Fu Xuan actually has the potential to be a mixture of all of them. That's both amazing and bad at the same time. The first team and the one that most of us were very excited slash prepared for would of course be Mono Quantum. That's gonna consist of Zila, Xing Shui, Silverwolf, Fu Xuan, or replacing 
exchange way with Lynx. Whatever works and floats your boat. While Fushuin and Lynx give us the option to run a completely true mono quantum team, you can actually increase this damage by adding a harmony unit that matches the element of whatever you're fighting. I.e., if you're fighting something weak to fire, you can put Ost on the team. If you're fighting something weak to win, you could put Bronya on the team. You get the gist. The next one, and most likely my favorite team comp, would be the dual element. Double win plus double quantum. Two fire, two quantum. Two win, two quantum. Two lightning, two quantum. Double win plus double quantum absolutely destroyed whatever I wanted. Blade, Bronya, Silver Wolf, Fushuin. I had too much fun playing this team comp. The final team comp, and I mean, I'm not gonna lie to you, it's kind of not a team comp. Do whatever you want. Fushuin is such an amazing character that she kind of just fits right into certain roles. The only role she really doesn't fit into is when you absolutely need shields. And even then, giving her texture of memories might just give you the shield. The Omnisia sees through you. The cycles of yin and yang never cease. Now for Eidolons, I'm just gonna jump right into this. E1 and E2 are absolutely amazing Eidolons that anyone would appreciate having. E1 gives your entire team 30% crit damage for free as long as the Matrix is active. Most of the community is already looking at pulling for this instead of the Signature Light Cone and for good reason. E2 turns her into an even better Bailu by giving the entire team a revival condition once again, as long as the Matrix is active. To elaborate, if one person dies and then some Someone else is supposed to die, the Matrix not only revives them, but it keeps everyone else from dying on that same turn. E4 gives her 5 energy every time an ally is attacked within the Matrix, which essentially gives her an absurd amount of energy regeneration on top of whatever she already has. Lastly, E6 turns her into a DPS monster. For all the HP lost by the entire team, Fushuin then converts that into damage up to 200% of that number. That's it. You win the game. You don't need this. But per usual of my demands, if you're rich enough to pull this Adelon, let me play with your Fushuin. Wrapping everything up, Fushuin in a single sentence is a jack of all trades and a master of none. She has the ability to solo stain a lot of content, but not all content, at least not without some serious tinkering of your build. She's absolutely bonkers at keeping the team from taking huge counts of damage and even better, utilize when you build her with some crit damage or break effect to help your DPS characters steamroll through waves. Two-piece Longevous, two-piece Wuthering Snow, two-piece Longevous, two-piece Healing, two-piece Quantum, two-piece Knight. However you want to build her, she will more than likely be fully functional on your team. She felt weird to me at first, but the more I explored her options, the more I appreciated the fact that I had the ability to explore so many options in the first place. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, do leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. As I continue to reiterate, Fushuin is a monster of a sustaining unit. Can she solo sustain? Yeah, but it ultimately comes down to how you build your Fu Xuan. For some of you, it will not be easy, and especially for some free-to-play players, you won't see the solo sustaining. The question is, it can Fu Xuan solo sustain? The question is, can your Fu Xuan solo sustain?